Are you interested in the economics of dating? I sure am. So, I've been listening to a podcast. Please forgive if you don't like vulgar language, but in this podcast, we use vulgar language, so, yeah. The podcast is called Fuckonomics. Um, you can check it out at fckonomics, O-N-O-M-I-C-S dot com, and you can check out that podcast. I'll put all these notes in the show notes. Um, I was really interested. I was listening to these guys. Uh, they're all three comedians. Um, I don't remember their first names, uh, for the life of me. I listened to it, like, a week or two ago. Um, it was really cool when I was listening to their podcast because what they're doing as, um, economics majors, um, they have, I think they have jobs within economics as well. Um, they were kind of talking about the roles of men and women in dating and how it relates to economics. And for the average person, we don't really talk about, you know, what it's like to go on a date. And when, a, you know, a lady and a dude are out and you're like, hey, let's go get drinks. So within the male dominant role within most common relationships, obviously the guy has to buy those drinks. Maybe. Although I've been on dates with a lady who she didn't have a gender in her mind because she just loved humans. So whether it was a girl that she was dating or a guy that she was dating, she really didn't care. Um, she just liked humans, and that was that was her thing. Um, you can call her Pan. You can call her you know whatever you'd like to call her, but um, her, she just liked human beings, and I, I thought it was kind of cool because you know whether you know some days it was I would you know buy drinks or you know some days I'd buy her lunch, but it was equal, and there was just a quality between the both of us without this male dominant societal white knighting in my opinion. Um, whether you can win this person by your, you know, savior aspect of, of how you feel you should treat that person. Um, which is a social contract and it's a social construct, which is not necessarily bad if you do that. It's just not necessarily positive towards your relationship. I'll put it that way. Um, on the Fuckonomics podcast, I thought it was kind of cool because they were talking about how um, the supply and demand curve of um, uh, within okay within economics you would call it the supply and demand curve, and basically the line of supply and the line of demand at some point have to meet, and you know those things don't have to be stagnant; they can move around. Um, and what they were talking about is how, um, men are not really created to, um, have children so young. Um, men are really created for, um, longer lasting life in a way because their youth is fleeting in the sense of, um, their power dominance. Uh, and physicality is uh, fleeting in their, er their earlier years. And more men in their 60s and 70s have the ability to have children and be more comfortable raising those children, whereas women have a finite amount of eggs within their bodies. And really, it's more profitable for a woman to have a child at you know 16 or 17 and a half. Now, we may think this is within our society right now, we may think that this is not really positive, but economically it tends to make a lot of sense because a woman between 16 and 30 is their prime time of when they have more eggs and they can have more children. Now we live in a world in which you can, you know, go on Amazon, buy all of your food, buy all of your sex toys and buy all of your Bibles and, um, get it sent to your door. So we no longer are hunter-gatherers, we no longer live in a village-type society in which we all have to go out and go hunt food and gather it and grow it. There's some guy in Iowa who's, you know, growing your tomatoes and, you know, some girl in India is, you know, um, putting together your shirt, you know. Uh, so our lives are a little bit different um, right now. Um, 
I did really enjoy their podcast. Uh, if you're not into vulgar language and you're not into, um, how, how would I explain it? They go for shock value comedy. So as you know, as comedians, they have to garner your attention, and the way they're going to garner it is by just shocking you with the most disgusting and repulsive things, if it's disgusting and repulsive to you. Um, but also just by talking openly about their sexuality and what they're about. So you know, they they kind of go through their you know their relationships of them being you know twenty thirty something guys, you know, going out and you know meeting women and you know. Um, taking it back to their house or, you know, going on down, which is a, a website, um, on your phone or, um, Tinder and finding that person. What I thought was really interesting is that they kind of talked about the economics of, um, wealth and beauty. So someone like Brad Pitt <laughs> to be, you know, have a night with Brad Pitt, you know, a guy like Brad Pitt, his up, he's up there. I mean, it's that's like a million dollars for just a night to be with, you know, Brad Pitt. Whereas someone, you know, more repulsive in our society is, you know, free. So where do those lines, uh, where does the supply and demand curve meet at the 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 cost of beauty and the cost of um, how our dating goes? Um, and they actually went through um, the whole prostitution portion of things where you know, they talk openly about it to where, you know, they've all been on uh, dates with ladies and that cost money. Uh, the morality portion aside from it, um, this were me tied into, you know, me studying economics. I really enjoy a guy named Walter Block. Um, if you go on uh, M-I-S-E-S, Mises dot org, um, you could, it's an economics institute. I'm not sure if they're a whole college yet. But basically, Walter Block has, I think he came up with a book about it. I linked the video, um, Defending the Undefendable. And, you know, Walter Block's a Christian. I think, well, he's, he's kind of like more like a proto-Jewish Christian. I'm not really sure. I'm kind of confused about that. Because I think he grew up as a, as a Jew, and then now he's um, a Christian. But I'm not really sure. He kind of goes back and forth with both of those. Um, but he has a whole book of defending the undefendable and where he goes and, um, defends prostitution. And so within that, where you take the, the Torah and the Christian Bible along with, um, positive morality or, uh, self-ownership. So, you know, right now, most Christians would say that, uh, Jesus is the Lord and Savior, and um, he is the Lord of their life. What they're saying is that they find self-ownership within the knowledge of Jesus being their God. A person who may or may not agree with Christianity may find self-ownership within their morality and in themselves as a natural being. So they have natural rights. So the opposite would be if you are a socialist, you believe that, um, not all of them, but the socialist idea or collectivist idea means that the collective has ownership over someone. So this is where also you would say that someone doesn't have the right to sell their body um, sexually um, and... They're not allowed to do that. We still live in a society like this right now where men and women um, are not allowed to prostitute themselves. How is you earning money on YouTube with your face different than selling your body? Because you're, you're doing the same thing. So when we look at economics and um, we, we really do have to separate morality and economics because the, the, the two can meet, but the two cannot stay the same. Um, I really enjoyed Walter Block's quote, um, you can do anything you damn well please as long as you keep your mitts to yourself. And I, I think it really sums up, uh, you know, sex positive Christian in my, in my opinion, because uh, you know, that's my view. My view is you do anything you fucking please 
as long as you keep your hands to yourself, you know, um, and actually right, right after that quote, you know, Walter Block, you know, even says, you know, Hey, even something as BDSM is okay. As long as someone says that it's okay. And when the Christianity, this is 100% an off topic. You would never be able to talk about BDSM ever. But here on Sex Positive Christian, I don't give a fuck without a Christian say. Uh, in my opinion, BDSM is a great thing. We try to say within our moral construct of what we feel that life is, is that obviously BDSM is all about dying and death and hurt and violence. Well, isn't sex violence? I mean, technically, you're you're forcing yourself with a person, okay? And there is pain within it. So all sexual acts are BDSM. Are they positive for each and every person? Not maybe necessarily, depending on who you, who you are. But it should be open. It should be an open discussion that you should be able to have. Uh, why is it an off-topic within Christians? Why shouldn't it be open? You know? Uh, that's my opinion on it. I don't know. Um, I can't remember if I asked this person if it was cool to say their name or not, but I'm going to shorten their name to CRL. This is a comment from you. As old souls, I believe we feel love deeper than most. More in the union of the spirit, less than the primal sexual experience. Although that is nice as well. I meet souls all the time that I have an immediate intimate response to due to the past life experiences together can make things complicated. I meet souls all the time that I have an immediate intimate response to do to past life experiences together can make things complicated. Oh, well, it's interesting. I'm I'm on a group called Old Souls. Um, if you want to get on that group on Facebook, you can. I think it's really interesting. I kind of feel that I'm an old soul, uh, and a young soul, kind of all at the same time. <laughs> I'm not I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm a punk rock guy at 30 who uh, doesn't have any kids, and uh, you know, I, I've kind of always, I guess, older than all of my peers in a way. Uh, but I don't, most of my friends are all really younger anyway, so I'm not really sure. I don't know how that works. Uh, <laughs> but I'm a part of it. I find it interesting at least. <laughs> I don't know where I found this book. Um, it's called Love, Sex, and Dating. I'll link it in the show notes. Um, the book is by Andy Stanley. And I refuse to go to church anymore. I'm completely against it. I, at least right now, I, at least I haven't found a place that I like to go. I went to one place of Virginia. It was like this giant mega church, and it's just not my thing. I used to go to like a, a cool hippie church. Where there was like maybe thirty of us. Um, I, I really enjoyed it because pretty much everybody went there. Gay, lesbian, straight, didn't matter. You were allowed to come there. I mean, we had people that would bring fruits and vegetables for people, and you can just get the fruits and vegetables. I had a friend who had, you know, he roasted coffee, and, you know, he would give that in, and um, they're really involved within the homeless projects and prison ministries and stuff. Um, it was just a bunch of people that got together, whether athe atheists or whatever, it didn't really matter. And it was an open spot for bands. So if you wanted to have your sweet hardcore band show up and play, you could have your sweet hardcore band play there. Um, so it was kind of cool, and I really enjoyed that. Um Andy Stanley, at least from what I saw today, I'm going to link the video. Um, you know, he's got, it's very upbeat, you know, but it's very corporate, churchy, uh, more entertainment in my opinion than it is like actual churchiness. That's kind of the point, I guess. I just, the whole church thing just really sends me off. I really don't agree with it. Um, <laughs> what Andy Stanley is talking about um, within the video about love, sex, and dating is changing your outlook on life within uh, utilizing the be attitudes in First Corinthians. Uh, love is patient, love is kind. We all know that phrase, and then it kind of goes on from there. And this is Paul the Apostle was you know talking about love 
to the Corinthian church. In perspective, this was a letter sent to that church about that church, okay? We all should put that in perspective when reading the Bible. (laughs) But these are all attributes that you can use within your life. You know, changing yourself to be more patient. Um, That's always good. Uh, And I I think one of the things that Andy was talking about that really impressed me was um, being a more patient person within your conversations. Uh, In a conversation that I had um, on a date a couple of weeks back, I just kind of talked to that person about what they're, you know, interested in and just let them talk about their experience. And I think what was interesting about Andy is talking about how a lot of people are very self-serving in their conversations. And so when, um, in the idea of the Beatitudes, one of the parts was, um, do not boast. So his, you know, thing was talking, you know, saying the one person was talking about, oh, how they went, you know, fishing and they got a three pound bass and a boasting person, but, oh, my dad's a freaking fisher champion or some shit like that right instead of one-upping that person and being more open to their conversation which is highly important um especially in an age of facebook uh trolling where we can take that within our own personal lives and just boast the entire time how badass you are and you know how cool you are or something like that i guess i don't know um so that was kind of cool you guys can check out that video it's a little bit more uh, corporate churchy that I'm into, but the guy has some really good ideas for dating, and I like that he's pushing on people. So hey, the first couple sentences were, "Hey, if you don't, you know, you're not about, uh, you know, having a one person, you know, like a full-on relationship. Then you don't, you don't have to, you know, watch it or read it. Put it in a closet and save it for later when you are." I'm really impressed with that because you know what. A lot of pastors are full of shit, and they just force this idea of what they think Jesus is on you. I'm totally about that. This guy wasn't about that, so hey, that's pretty cool. I like his comment, love does never do anything that causes regret. So I will leave you with that. Sex positive Christian, I'm Blair. It's not my real name, but you guys have an awesome Monday, and cherish every second that you have. Peace.